Paul Maynard. Mr Deputy Speaker, one of my regular Sunday penances more for me is to read the Observer. I don't do that for um, the quality of its journalism, nor for the need to listen to Will Hutton's economic um, wisdom when I put that in inverted commas. I do perhaps because I'm very keen to try to get my head around what the opposition are thinking, to try to understand better why they say the crazy things they do say. And this week was, was particularly interesting because the Observer actually printed a column where it bemoaned the death of political discourse. Bemoaned the death of it because of the quality of the opposition's response to what happened last week over the Justice Secretary's comments. And nothing I have heard today in these two debates that I have sat through has given me any cause to decide that the quality of political discourse in this chamber is improving. With a few honourable exceptions on both sides of the House, it has been profoundly dispiriting. What was far more spiriting was actually my attendance at the Civic Sunday service yesterday in Polton the Fylde, the service for the new Mayor of Wire. Because I found sitting next to me in the chamber, in the pews rather, of the church, the divisional commander for the northern section of the Lancashire Constabulary, a man that occasionally I see at the odd event, who was um, senior policeman in Blackpool as well, which is adjacent. And we had a fascinating discussion about some of the challenges he faces in terms of policing. The role of domestic violence. 36% of violent crime in the Northern Division occurs within a family dwelling, for example. We talked about the need or his arguments in favour of minimum pricing for alcohol. We had a good natured debate about that. But what it brought home to me was exactly the point I think that the Honourable Member for Cardiff South was trying to make earlier, which is that partnership working is a good thing that here we have very senior policemen who have a very good understanding of the social problems of the communities that they seek to serve. The previous day, I'd had another more spiriting encounter at one of my street surgeries. One of my local residents, I was standing in the street corner under my conservative umbrella in the pouring rain on the foul coast, and we were discussing uh, an issue of long-term antisocial behaviour. I was trying to persuade the house owner, who was an elderly gentleman, that it was worthwhile reporting the crime to the police, that he shouldn't just assume that he would be ignored. He actually had to have a bit more confidence in the police. And once again, it brought home to me a fundamental disconnect, that we can have as many packed meetings as we like, but they don't achieve much if they're not attended. We can have as many well-paid members of police authorities as we like, promoting themselves all of a sudden to make sure that they have a future perhaps. Yet if people don't know who they are, if people don't see the role they play, and they haven't done recently, then I don't believe that they too are the ones to reconnect with ordinary people. That's why I strongly support the decision to introduce children's commissioners, or um, police commissioners rather. Now, I speak as a Member of Parliament who is fortunate in this chamber. As I mentioned to the Shadow Home Secretary earlier, um, I know the Chief Constable of Lancashire has an awful lot to say for himself, but he has some very excellent divisional commanders who have been working on trying to accommodate the budgetary changes in Lancashire. And in Blackpool, they've actually been able to increase the number of neighbourhood policers policemen on the beat, on the front line. That wonderful phrase that the opposition loves so much, on the front line. And my constituents will benefit from that. And I welcome it. And I welcome, more importantly, the commitment from the Shadow Home Secretary. I'm so grateful to her for writing all of my future um, election leaflets between now and the general election. Because if I heard her correctly, she said that she was now going to pledge to maintain police numbers as they now are. So when I get my hands out tomorrow, I can now say quite confidently that Labour are going to cut policing in Blackpool. They're going to take it back to where it was to start with, before we had these improvements in neighbourhood policing. My main concern, though, and one I'd like to raise in the final minute, perhaps, is that last year, Lancashire Police's total external income was £310 million, less than for the year 2010-11, but still £2 million more than 2009-10. 
However, over 30% of the increase in the police authorities' council tax precept has not gone on the frontline policing, but rather on plugging the growing gap in police pensions. I know there is a lot of concern on all sides of the House about changes to police terms and conditions, but I think it is important to look at it, as the Home Secretary herself has said, from the point of view of fairness to taxpayers as well. By 2011, the subsidy from the taxpayer to plug the gap in Lancashire Police Authority's pension scheme has risen to 23 million, up from 13 million just three years ago. So I firmly believe that police should get a fair pension, that they should get a fair deal. But taxpayers also deserve a degree of fairness, and the systemic underperformance of police pension funds is something that does have to be resolved because the burden falls in the end on all of us. Thank you very much.